The program tree is an important concept for sound design creation because it houses the architecture of the sounds that we're building inside of Hallion. It houses all of the elements and building blocks that make up a sound. For demonstration purposes, I'm using one of the developer's presets, but Hallion is about building your own sound. The signal flow runs from top to bottom, and we can see each individual element by clicking on the Edit and Sound tabs. The program tree can be broken down into four main components. First of all, we've got the zones. These are the elements that create sound. Layers help us structure and organize the components in a program. The MIDI modules process the different MIDI events. Then we've got the bus section, which allows us to route audio and also add effects. At the very top of the program tree, we've got the program layer, which houses everything inside that program. In this program table, we've got two MIDI modules, the trigger pads and the flex phraser. Any content that's designed in Hellion 6 to be shared with Hellion Sonic has to include these two modules here as part of the architecture. As we move through our program tree, we encounter our first layer. You can see the icon is different. Now this layer houses more MIDI modules, another flex phraser, two LFOs, a script that we don't need to worry about at this point in time, and the all important zone element. Hallion has five different zones for generating sound, which makes it extremely unique for a software sampler. You can change zones on the fly using the menu inside of the sound editor, and you can also combine a number of different zones in a program tree to make a really complex program. Now that we're generating sound, it's time to take care of the audio signal. In the audio bus section, we can add effects inserts and auxiliary sends. Down at the bottom, we've got the program bus, where we can also add more effects over the entire program. Hallion contains a number of building blocks which we can combine to build complex sounds. But to make it easy for other people to use our instruments or sounds, we can build macro pages. Macro pages are a simple front end for everything that's going on behind the scenes. For example, I'm loading a pattern into the arpeggiator in Anima, which has also loaded it into the flex phraser. So we can control exactly which part of this architecture the user should have access to. We're using the program tree to get access to all of the important building blocks to create our own sound and instrument. Whatever we edit in a macro page will start off from where we left the parameter inside the Hellion 6 editor behind the scenes. So the two-tiered system makes it really easy to build and edit our own programs and also build our own macro pages. Another good example are the tabs along the top. We've got two oscillators, a sub and noise. Now if I go over to the edit tab and click on the all important zone element, you'll see that we've got two oscillators, the sub and the noise housed in the zone editor. This is really where the guts of this program was created and it was further shaped and sculpted using filters, the amplifier section, also envelopes. As we move further down through the editor, we've got two LFOs, we've got a step modulator, and the modulation matrix, where we can use one parameter to control another parameter. In this case, we're using an LFO to affect the cutoff. Now, I don't mean to scare you, but this is a relatively simple program. So that means there's not a whole lot going on in the program tree. So let's lift the game and go and look at a more complex program. I'm going over to this Skylab program, which actually contains two layers. Yep, you can have multiple layers with multiple macros and those layers are represented over in the program tree. Now that might sound daunting, but actually it's really cool. And that is why Hallion is so powerful. Again, in the program layer, we've got the two MIDI modules. They're both turned off. The flex phraser is turned off because there's other flex phrases below in the layers. Again, the signal path runs from top to bottom. So the flex phraser at the top has the run of the house and will control anything in the layers below it, including other flex phrases. Now this is where life gets really interesting. If we open up the ambient pad layer, you can see we've got a number of zones. Now these zones are based on granular synthesis. So if we go over to the menu, you'll see the tick next to the grain and you'll see the grain icon next to the zones in the program tree. As I use my cursor keys to scroll through the different zones, the sample's changing over in the grain oscillator editor area. If I click on the mapping tab, I can see that each one of these zones has its own allocated area or zone over in the MIDI mapping section. Right mouse click on a key on the keyboard down the bottom to see what zones have been assigned to that key. Click on that ambient pad and then straight away we're back up in the program tree and you can see that zone highlighted. Let's go back to the sound tab and keep moving down through this program tree. Down below the zones, we've got an audio bus which contains four audio inserts and it's easy to select them, get the editors up and start changing parameters. The second layer in the program tree is virtually identical to the first layer. The only difference being that there's different samples loaded into the granular oscillator. 
The audio bus inserts are exactly the same. Now we can solo different layers by clicking on the S button to the left in the program tree. Now let's solo the second layer and see what that sounds like. Now we've had a quick look at how the program tree works, let's get our hands dirty. Let's select that second layer there, right mouse click to get the context menu, and select copy. You can also select copy from the toolbar along the top of the program tree. In the program table, I'm selecting a blank program and dragging it over to the slot rack so that it's active. Up in the program tree, I'm going to click on that program layer, which is the first one, and add a MIDI module. I'm going to add two MIDI modules. The first one I'm going to add is a flex phraser, simply because it's first on the list. I'm disabling the flex phraser for the moment. I'm going to add some trigger pads, which are handy if you don't have an external keyboard and you're doing sound design, because you can assign chords to each individual pad. A really important part of sound design using the program tree is the ability to copy and paste in between your layers and also the programs that you're creating. So essentially, you may have built a program with, say, a wavetable zone and effects inside one program, so you can then copy and paste that and merge it with another program that you've created, which might be something like a synth program. Now, that's really cool. By the way, check out the VST YouTube channel for videos on how to design a sound from scratch. For now, on with the program tree. I'm just renaming this layer. You can drag and drop elements from one layer to another layer using the mouse. You can also hold down Alt to copy and paste them from one layer to another layer. I'm right mouse clicking on this layer to get my contextual menu, and now I'm going to add a new layer via the contextual menu. Now it's time to add a zone. I've added an organ zone, because I'm going to bring some harmonics into this sound. I'm not going to spend too long messing around here. The main concept is that we could use the program tree to create and build our sounds. That'll do for now. I'm going to go to the flex phraser and turn the flex phraser on and select an arpeggiator. So I'm going down to the phrase and just selecting the first thing that I see. And it sounds okay. But I want to add some ambience, so let me show you how to add effects. Right mouse click, go to new bus and add bus for now. This time when I right mouse click, I can only add an effect. But you can see from the drop down menu that I can add the insert that I'm looking for, which is some reverb. Let's go back and repeat that process. Right mouse click on the bus, go down to new, effect, and from the sub menu, select another effect, in this case, multi-delay. I can start to edit the effect parameters and build on the overall ambience of this sound. Contextual menus are everywhere inside of Hellion, and whatever I do in another area of Hellion will always reflect in the program tree. So once I've renamed this patch, it's instantly renamed up in the program table. You can right mouse click in the program tree or the program table to save the program or more importantly, export it to Hellion Sonic or Hellion Sonic SE. And then you can share or even sell the content that you're creating. As I save it, I'm basically giving it tags or attributes so that it will show up in a media based search, which is really important if we're sharing our content. There are plenty more instructional videos up on the Steinberg YouTube channel, so please subscribe to our channels and reach out to us on social media. We're constantly posting important information about how you can use our tools to take your creativity to the next level. I'll catch you in the next video.